Earlier this week, I talked about an adorable little droid, BB-8. And today, I want to share with you a legend story about a little red and white droid, R5-D4, the droid that Owen originally purchased during A New Hope until it broke down and instead they got R2-D2. But what if this droid was something more? What if this droid was a Jedi? And what if his actions changed the fate of a galaxy? This story is very non-canon and was published in Star Wars Tales about 15-ish years ago. So join me for a very, very non-canon story that is very, very silly. On the desert planet of Tatooine, Obi-Wan Kenobi could sense there were two potential Jedi Knights on the planet. One was Luke Skywalker, son of Anakin. But the other? The other he couldn't pinpoint, and it frustrated him. Obi-Wan searched all over the planet, but even when he felt he was almost on top of the potential Jedi, he couldn't locate him. Little did he suspect the mysterious Jedi was literally under his nose. For the one he was searching for was Skippy, the Jedi droid. Skippy wasn't entirely sure when he had become self-aware. It was more than artificial intelligence. He was something more. There was something different about him. But when he tried to tell the other droids, they would simply laugh at him and call him names. They never let poor Skippy join in any droid-type games. However, one day while Skippy was serving drinks for his cruel, cruel master, Jabba the Hutt, a passing bounty hunter banged into him. Skippy knew that if he spilled the drink, the punishment would be severe or even fatal. But then something happened. Skippy reached out with his mind, with his feelings, and the drink righted itself. Skippy knew that was impossible, yet it happened. No one else had noticed it happened so quickly, and he quietly went back to his duties. That night, while everyone was sleeping, Skippy decided to try to move a rock. Nothing happened at first, but then he lifted the rock. Skippy would practice nightly. He had no idea why or how he had these powers, but that he did possess some sort of bizarre skill, like the fabled Jedi Knights. Four, his lubricants were rife with metachlorians, and one night, Skippy used his power to remove his restraining bolt and he escaped from servitude. Two huge guards blocked his way out, but he simply reached out with the power of the force and said, beep a beep do bop bop, which translates to, I'm not the droid you're looking for, and Skippy rolled to freedom to seek his destiny as a Jedi droid. However, there was a problem. Poor Skippy was in the middle of the desert, Jedi or not, droid or not. The desert is intimidating and daunting. During the day, he would hide in the shadows from the twin sons of Tantooine. He would also hide from the Sand People from Tusken. But Skippy began to wear down. He was encrusted with dirt, filthy, his power cells were draining, but then one day, destiny found him. Knowing he couldn't last much longer, he let the Jawas spot him, and they cleaned him up as best they could. Skippy made the decision to stay aboard their transport for a while, knowing he could escape any time he wanted. One day, aboard the transport, he met two droids, C-3PO, who wouldn't shut up, and an R2 unit that seemed obsessed with some type of mission, a message to be delivered to Obi-Wan Kenobi. That name struck a chord with the droid. Skippy became frustrated. The Force was trying to tell him something, but he was unable to comprehend. Skippy tried to figure out what the Force was telling him, but the constant yammering of the gold droid made concentrating difficult. Images swirled in Skippy's head he couldn't comprehend. A vision of a man dressed in black, and a young woman who, for some reason, had cinnamon rolls on her head, and armored soldiers, and sometimes they were riding on large lizard-like creatures, but other times, they were just sitting on a large replica of one. It was all very confusing. Then one day, the transport ground to a halt, and the droids were put out into the hot Tantooine surface. Two moisture farmers approached an older man and a young man, and Skippy knew there was something about the younger man. Something about him. Something that seemed to call out greatness. Skippy knew instantly the force was strong in the young man. Destiny had seen him through after all. This young man and he would be an unstoppable team. Skippy nudged a thought into Owen. I am the droid you're looking for. And suddenly Owen called out, and that red one. Luke called out to Skippy, and he began to roll towards his destiny, 
when suddenly the future became very clear to Skippy. Skippy would try to communicate with the young Jedi, but C-3PO would refuse to translate such rubbish. Uncle Owen would see him start moving things with the Force and would immediately have Skippy's memories erased. Meantime, the armored men would come for the blue R2 and take him to the dark caped man. The dark man would destroy the R2 unit, then he would kill the young woman with the cinnamon rolls on her head. Eventually the rebels would be found and a frightening space station would fill the sky above them and blow them out of existence. Obi-Wan Kenobi would sense their minds crying out in fear and terror, and filled with despair, his mighty heart would give out and he would die, alone and forgotten in his hut. The young Jedi would stay and rot on Tatooine, one excuse after another until he was an old moisture farmer staring at the sky, looking to a destiny he had never followed. All this because the blue R2 unit had not been chosen. If the blue R2 unit went with the young Jedi, a very different and great path lay ahead, one that did not include Skippy the Jedi droid. Without hesitation, Skippy drove the force inward. Luke cried out, Uncle Owen, this R2 unit has a bad motivator, look! With the Jedi droid's fading strength, he prompted C-3PO to say, Excuse me, sir, but that R2 unit is in prime condition. A real bargain. And as Skippy's circuits failed, he saw the future to come. All thanks to his heroic sacrifice. As blackness fell, he watched C-3PO and R2-D2 side by side, as they were meant to be. When stormtroopers came and destroyed the Jawas and their cargo, Skippy, still in a coma, was blasted to pieces by a stray stormtrooper bolt. He died alone, unmourned. Until now. Be kind to your droids and major appliances, and next time you're alone and feel something, a faint beeping in your skull, you may be sensing him. One with the Force now, ever present, ever seeking out others of his kind. Others who may be in your kitchen, or on your desk, or in your briefcase. Wherever machines are taken for granted, there will be Skippy the droid. Poor Skippy the Jedi droid, you'll always be remembered. Or not, because Disney rebooted the universe and now you're simply a droid that malfunctioned on the planet. Maybe one day they'll flush you back out again. I highly doubt it. Some fun facts, or at least fun for me, in the Legends material, which is no longer canon, R5-D4 was actually treated pretty terribly on the transport by the Jawas, which that isn't the, the fun part, I'm not prejudiced towards droids. But he grew really, really bitter on the transport until one day he was purchased by a rebel historian and spy, and then he ended up spending his days working for the Rebellion. Which I think the Legends version of him is a lot happier than this comics version where he's blown up, or even the current canon where he simply malfunctioned on a planet. And that's it. He had a little bit of a happier ending in the Legends universe. Besides that also fun fact, while Skippy the Jedi droid wasn't actually canon, he was referenced later, the story was referenced later in a Legends material, which was canon, which made the rumor or story of Skippy the droid actually true, which was kind of cool. Some last minute things, you'll notice uh, a few errors in this comic. The biggest one is calling the Sand People the Sand People from Tusken. And the Tusken Raiders aren't called that because of their point of origin, so they didn't come from Tusken. The Tusken Raiders were named that because of their raiding of Fort Tusken. And that was true in the old canon and even in the new canon universe. And I don't know if they purposely made that mistake, if it was just a little poke or not. You'll also notice in this comic there were some familiar robots, such as Bender from Futurama and two of the robots from Mystery Science Theater 3000, which was very cute. So that is the tale of Skippy the Jedi Droid. Make sure you like and subscribe, come back every week for new Star Wars videos, Game of Thrones videos, comic videos, and more.